Greetings, and welcome back for another Music Theory Bite. In this video, I'm going to talk again about identifying atonal trichords, but these are going to be slightly more advanced atonal trichords. So if that sounds like something you'd like to learn more about, stick around because this is the video for you. You'll recall from my earlier video on identifying atonal trichords that I had a series of steps that you should follow in order to do it. And those included, first of all, knowing the theory, memorizing all of your atonal trichords, which you see in front of you right now. Second, drawing the shape of the trichord. Third, once you get the shape, identify the lowest pitch as zero, then identify one of the intervals, then identify a second interval, then do the math, and once you've finished all that, then you should have all the numbers of the pitches that go into the trichord, and once you have that, you, you can compare it to your chart of trichords and come up with the correct fourth number. Now, it would be great if every composer simply composed all their trichords in closed position. Then our lives would be a whole lot easier. But composers don't do that. They often try to hide things, to blur things, to make them more interesting, to exploit all sorts of other musical characteristics by displacing some pitches in these trichords. We still have to identify what the trichord is, but now our, our task is a little bit more complex. So we're going to have to come up with a new series of steps based on what we've done before in order to make this happen. So let's get started. Many of our steps for identifying the trichords are going to be the same, but because we aren't going to be able to definitively say where our zero is until we do a little bit of figuring, that's going to change things just a little bit. So let's go over what's the same and what's different. We start by memorizing and knowing that chart of trichords. So we know the theory behind what it is that we're going to hear. Next, we listen to the trichord. In this case, our trichord sounds like this. And just as we did in our previous video, we're going to start by drawing the shape of the trichord. Now you'll notice we, it is one of our six trichord shapes, and so everything seems to be good so far. Next, we're going to identify an interval that we hear very clearly. Again, I tend to hear the smaller intervals more clearly. In this case, I hear a minus one from the first pitch to the third pitch, a half step right there. So I know this is going to be one of those first column trichords already. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that on my chart. Now, if I listen for one of the other intervals, I'll notice that the easiest one for me to hear in this case was the second pitch to the third pitch, or the low pitch to the middle pitch, which I heard as a plus eight, a minor sixth. So if I do the math on that then, as I did before, and I stick my numbers on it, my lowest pitch would be a zero, then a plus eight would be an eight, and then plus one would be a nine, so I'd have a zero, eight, nine. And then if I compare that to my chart of trichords, I'll notice that I don't have a zero, eight, nine anywhere on that chart. Something is wrong. At this point, I could use my knowledge of trichords and just do the math to figure out what trichord it is, but sometimes that's a little bit harder to do when you're doing things more quickly. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to listen for which of these pitches sounds like it doesn't belong in outside or it's outside of the range of the other two pitches. So listening to the trichord again, you'll notice that that low pitch sounds like it's pretty far away from everything else. And sure enough, from when I did the math before, a minus eight, a plus nine from the first pitch to the low pitch would tell me that something's wrong there. That pitch is most likely the one that is outside of the range of everything else. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to imagine that pitch up an octave. That is, I'm going to invert the trichord by taking that lower pitch and moving it up. Now when that I do that, that plus eight that I have becomes a plus four. That is, I'm inverting it around the other pitches, and where I had a minor sixth, it now becomes a major third. You'll see that graphically on the, your screen right now. Once I've done that, then I now can redo the math. I now know that my low pitch, or my zero, is that last pitch, and then I do the math. I have that plus one from the first pitch to the third pitch, and then I figure out that plus four, which was the inversion of that minus eight, and I end up with a zero, one, four. And sure enough, that is one of my atonal trichords. That is a 3-3 trichord, and I have figured it out. So if we take another trichord, in this case, I'm going to have one that sounds like this. So 
So once again, I draw my shape and I get the easy interval. In this case, I have a minus two from the first pitch to the second pitch. And then that really wide interval, that's a minor ninth or a minus 13. That is obviously the pitch that is not in the range of the other two pitches. So that's the one I'm gonna to have to bring up by an octave. So I do that, I subtract 12 from that 13, I end up with a minus one. That is still my lowest pitch, so I'm gonna mark it as such. That is a zero. I go plus one backwards in here, I end up with a one, and then plus two backwards from there, I end up with a three, a zero, one, three, which is one of my atonal trichords that I know and love. That is my three, two trichord. So, <clears throat> the only step that we really have to change on this one is instead of labeling our lowest pitch as zero, we have to figure out which pitch really belongs as our zero when we hear the trichord. And that's figuring out which pitch or pitches are outside of the compact range of the other pitches. And by moving that by an octave to bring everything into its most compact range, then we can start doing the math to figure out what our trichord really is. Again, if you come up with an answer that is not one of your trichords on your chart of trichords, then you found the wrong pitch or you need to start moving a different pitch up an octave, down an octave to bring everything closer together. Well, that does it for this video. If you found it helpful, as always, please like it. Feel free to leave constructive comments below. And as always, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel for the latest Music Theory Bites as they become available. Until next time.